Hi Scorpio, welcome to your December 2017 Love and General Tarot reading. I'm Gemstone Tarot, Valentine joins us, you can just see her on the bed there, she's bobbed off to sleep. So Scorpio, what is coming up for you in December? What does Scorpio need to know? Sun, moon and rising. Ooh. Using the huge Tarot Scorpio. See what the cards have to tell you. Oh, Scorpio, thank you for all your likes, shares, and your subscribe. Check out the weekly video as well that went up yesterday. That's got all zodiac signs time stamped, so you can look up your sun, your moon, and your rising. I'm going to do nine. Oh, that one wants to come out. Nine cards for you. If you want a private reading Scorpio or to donate to the channel, you can do that it's all in the description box below the video. Or you can visit ooh, my website, gemstonetarot.com. I'm liking the card at the bottom of your deck. I don't think I'm the only person liking the card at the bottom of your deck. <laughs> By the looks of it. Wow, this is a powerful reading. And a good one. Okay, something's shifting for you in December, Scorpio. Your readings have been tricky for a while. A few people's have actually, but certainly yours, I remember for my weeklies and monthlies have been tricky. Wow, okay. I don't always like to see the Eight of Cups in a reading, but I do in yours. Eight of Cups, Saturn in Pisces. Something you once held dear, you once loved. Something or someone. Also on this card we have a full moon now. Pay attention Scorpio, on the 3rd of December we have a super full moon in Gemini. It's a revealer. We also, Jupiter went into Scorpio, I think it was 10th of October. Which for you, Scorpio as well, I mean, you're already a sleuth, you're already good at finding things out, you're already good at getting to the root of the emotional truth. You know when something needs to be revealed, you know when you need to know something, and you've known for ages that you need to know something, and it's been driving you nuts. Well... Gemini likes to talk. Full moon and Gemini likes to talk. And you have the moon in reverse, which actually is great. When it's in the upright, it holds its secrets. It's more Neptunian. It's um, more draped with illusion. You've had enough of drapes with illusion, Scorpio. You don't need any more drapes with illusion, do you? You want the opposite of drapes with illusion. And I feel like, in a very backhanded way, you're going to get it. So, with this full moon in Gemini, there are things to be revealed that will come to you easily. Whispers on the wind, rumours, um, people actually just telling you things, things popping up on the internet, whatever it is. The things you wanted to know, you're going to find out, but Mercury goes retrograde. It's already in its shadow period. It tends to take whatever energy there is and kind of twist it. It holds it back because Mercury is sort of going backwards. It's not really, but it kind of is more complicated than we need to get into. It takes the momentum of Gemini's blabbing and it makes it a bit... It hides it a bit and then reveals it in weird ways. So you may accidentally find things out. People may accidentally blab stuff to you. You may... None of this is sleuthing. If you're looking for it too hard, it's not going to come because it's not about that. If you've been looking for it in the past, yes, because Mercury is a retrograde. So anything for, that you've been doing in the past, yes, that will pop up. It's almost like 
you booked your answers weeks and months ago and now they come but you almost forgot you asked them. So it's like, oh my God, that comes out or you pop up on Facebook or whatever it is. Now this big reveal, drip fed such as it is, gives you the ammunition to do that. Saturn in Pisces, Saturn the taskmaster says to Pisces, yes, you held a lot of love for this person, place or thing and I don't care, you need to walk away from it. Saturn is sensible, the planet of being sensible, the planet of doing the right thing. Pisces, the sign of loving things and being unconditional. Saturn says, enough of that. <laughs> you can love something and for your own good, walk away. So walk away. All that situation literally exits your life. By the end of the Mercury period, which I take to be January, officially it's the 22nd or 23rd of December. I take it to really be January by the time it's finished fiddling about. You won't have that in your life anymore. And then, sorry, I've got my hot water bowl, that's why you can hear jiggling. There's two other cards that warm my cockles, Scorpio. Look, the Three of Swords in reverse. And you know this Three of Swords. You, you've been feeling that. I know in the private readings I've been doing for Scorpios that that's been an issue. And it's come up a lot, actually. Three of Swords can be a third party situation. It can be betrayal. Either way, in the right away, it's just like a big red heart with three swords stuck in it. You know, they don't mess about with the right away. With interpretation, it's just boom, 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 three swords. So we all know where we stand with that. When it's in reverse, the swords can drop out, the wounds can heal, the eight of cups can be activated, the truth will out. I love it, actually. Then we have the nine of swords in the reverse, which is fantastic. This is what it's been causing you. This is my 4am card. In the right away, again, it's a woman in a patchwork, patchwork bed who's got her head in her hands in the middle of the night, you can tell it is, and there's like nine swords here. And the reason is because this is all of the things in your head. This is your own self-torture. This is anxiety, jealousy, um, competitiveness, worry. That's sort of, as well, it's not the constructive kind, it's the kind where it, it just goes, what about this, what about that, what about this, what about that, until you just, oh, you wake up and you feel like, instead of having a good night's sleep, you've actually been to war. That's in the reverse, and for me it's the same principle as the Three of Swords in reverse. This is me miming all the swords dropping out. And then you'd be tired. I mean, obviously you'd be, you know, hmm, okay, what happened there? But you needed that to happen and you have done for ages, ages and ages and ages. Now, three of pentacles in reverse. This is a message for me about sharing. Don't be too private. Scorpio is, I would say, probably actually the most private of all of the signs. Because a lot of signs choose to be private. Whereas Scorpio, I'm not sure it's a choice. You need to choose to share things. I feel this whole situation, you've tried to shoulder a lot of this on your own. That's a lonely anxiety card because you felt you couldn't trust anyone to share it with. But you kind of need to, you, you know, you shouldn't be keeping all this to yourself. No man or woman is an island, Scorpio. So just choose a trusted friend. You have trusted friends. Scorpios are very loyal to their friends. They normally have a lot of acquaintances 
and they're one or two really, really good friends. Don't be afraid to share what this was. You know, don't be afraid to share that. Don't be afraid to share a few tears about that. And sharing will dissipate that. And then you get the star in the reverse as well. This whole situation, Scorpio, has knocked your juju, what I call your juju, your feeling of what you can manifest, your feeling of your lucky star, your feeling of connection with the universe. It's taken a bit of a bang. That's understandable, to be fair. It has been really difficult. You have Someone has taken a piece of you but it does regrow and it does regrow for the better. Then you get this lovely Nine of Pentacles card. Finally, and probably as a result even of this situation, you find a way through. This is almost to me, you know, with the dress that she's got on, someone who's recuperating. But as she's recuperating, pentacles are there, the bird of paradise is there, the garden is growing, things are healthy. This is a healthy, can be called the happy single person card. Now, as well as that, major arcana, we have the fool in the upright. Yee-ha for the fool. The beginning of the major arcana, going again, a new journey, setting off on a quest. And I like that for you. And I love to see the Fool when I see the Eight of Cups. And then at the bottom of the deck, the Two of Cups. And nobody doesn't want to see that. That was a double negative. We all want to see that, is what I'm trying to say. Mercury's going retrograde. I can't speak. Two of Cups, Soulmate card, beautiful exchange of cups. This opportunity comes in. Now, as I'm telling most signs, I don't feel it comes in during December particularly because of Mercury retrograde. And even if it does, it will carry over into January, hopefully, because relationships <coughs> that start when Mercury's retrograde can be a bit flaky. But it's fine if you meet someone during that time and you tentatively get to know them while watching the calendar to make sure that Mercury's going to go direct. You're like, yep, now I can do dinner in the cinema. <laughs> and then you get the Two of Pentacles. Life's going to get busy. This is the work and life balance card for me. This is someone who's juggling the pentacles, shuffling life, shuffling love life work, all the rest of it. But it's going to get busy. Your calendar's going to get full. Probably of dates, looking at the Two of Cups. Yeah. Your Chuck Spezzano Enlightenment card is to tell you about heartbreak. The relationship card of heartbreak. This was heartbreak. That could be why you've been avoiding it. It could be... Why it's so, just so messy? I mean... What can we do? We're all human. Eight of Cups. Three of Swords. Nine of Swords. That's what that is. I don't feel... I feel like you've already gone a long way to getting enlightenment with this situation. Because if you hadn't, the Eight of Cups wouldn't be showing up for us. So I feel quite comfortable about that, especially with the Fool and the Two of Cups showing up in your reading. But just... Scorpios can be fiercely loyal to friends, but also to people who don't deserve it sometimes. Just check in on yourself, Scorpio, that you're not... You know, with Mercury retrograde, if someone has already exited your life, they sometimes bob back up again. Keep walking, you know, don't look back on those Eight of Cups, keep walking. 
Yeah. So your love cards, you get expectations. And this is just to tell you if you are newly single particularly, you may even though this person wasn't exchanging cups with you properly, you may compare people to this person still. Not so much you need to lower your expectations, you just need to not have any. You know, this is a clean sheet, you've got the full. Your old expectations don't apply here because they're based on fear. And you don't really need that anymore, I'm pleased to say. And then you get tryst. When you meet someone, there may be a secretive element to it. Just make sure, with this Two of Cups and the Trist card, just make sure that it's legit. Just make sure there's no one else in the background, Scorpio. Yeah. Then you get the Buy the Book card. And this is a message to tell you, you don't need to live by the book. You don't need to live by your book. That book is kind of gone now. It's in, you're starting a new chapter. In fact, it's a whole new book with the fool. Don't live by your old rules. You just really literally don't need them, Scorpio. Yes! Healing with the Angels Oracle card, you get new beginnings. Fantastic card. What more do you need to know, Scorpio? If you want a private reading, you can book in the description box, watch your weekly video and do subscribe if you haven't already. Namaste Scorpio.